Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tyler Shaw with Nomad Outfitters and today we got a 2020 Jeep Gladiator uh, build that we did for a local client. The goal of this build was to build a Overland rig uh, that is fully self-supported and we'll go, go into all the nuances that we did throughout from A to Z, bumper to bumper. Turned out very cool, the client's very happy with it. I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Okay, starting the front, this, this was a, a build that uh, started with our partner shop, High Country 4x4, and they did do a very good job with what the setup was, what the vehicle was first purpose for, and then the client wanted to do more of an overland build, so that's where we kind of came in. Uh, changed up the suspension, changed up a few things throughout, added some more creature comforts. Um, on the front of the vehicle, he's got an OEM uh, factory winch bumper set up with a Warren Z on 12S winch. Uh, the only thing that we really did in the front was we added some, some uh, Squadron SAE amber fog lights. Moving on to the side of the vehicle, there are a few things that were done by our partner shop, uh, including the rock slide engineering sidestep sliders. Uh, it's not something we typically do on our builds, but the client actually really likes it. Uh, High Country does quite a few of them. On the suspension setup, it's got a uh, kind of a hybrid setup because again, it started with a Nevo suspension and then we adapted more of to, uh, a setup that will support the weight, uh, get everything set up more for what he wanted to do with the rig. He's got AEV uh, HD Overland Springs front and back. It's got uh, Bill Stein 8100 double bypasses to where you have compression and rebound adjustment on them. Uh, we did temper and bump stops. It's got, again, it's got Evo control arms, which is about the last of that, of that product on the rig. Uh, we got a TerraFlex front and rear track bar, and we did a Hellwig rear sway bar on it. Uh, one of the other cool things that we did was the utilizing the 4xe door uh, for his compressor. So the compressor is a grim off-road mount that is tucked down in the fender well. He's got his power for his compressor, uh, his air coupler for his compressor on the outside where he doesn't have to go back inside the rig or pop the hood to get to it. Everything works very cleanly. Uh, tires and wheels, um, if we have method wheels with a BF Goodrunch KO2 and a 371250. It's got a long range America fuel tank underneath that's 18 gallons, I believe, 18 gallons, which takes his fuel capacity up to around 40 gallons total. Uh, moving on to the rear of the vehicle, we actually did a winch in the rear, um, which it does add some weight, but at the same time, it is a heavy vehicle in general and being able to get out of tough situations, it is nice having that winch in the rear. Uh, moving on to the camper and why a lot of people are probably watching this video. We did go with a skinny guy camper on this build and it is one of our favorite campers to go with because it, it does maximize your space. Uh, you don't have a lot of room on the Gladiator and this actually gives you a lot of optionality with your sleeping area as well as kind of a borderline living room area inside the camper. This is the kit and caboodle option, which is their, their top of the line trim level, uh, kind of all encompassing. You do have a full working toilet on board. It does have a Truma hot water heater set up as well as a Truma, that's a, I guess it's a dual purpose Truma hot water set up as well as a uh, Truma heater for inside the camper. It does have a Red Arc Manager 30 uh, powering your auxiliary battery, which this one does have a 100 amp hour battery on board. You can go up to 120 amp hour battery and still fit it with an XBN 360. You are able to shower inside the camper or outside the camper because it all is all encompassing with drainage. Uh, it's got a 12 gallon freshwater tank as well as a nine gallon gray water tank on board. Okay, moving on to the sleeping platform on the, on the camper. Uh, they have this thing rated as 600 pounds. So it's plenty of, plenty of weight for two people uh, it does have a solar panel swing out that does allow you to get solar power coming into your power management system while you're parked at camp. It does have a water catch system as well, which is really cool. Uh, how that works is when it's raining, water's hitting the tent, it's going down into the built-in built gutter system on the sleeping platform, runs into a hose and drains right into your water tanks. Um, 
Let's check out the inside of the camper here. Okay, inside the camper here, there's there's plenty of room. Uh, if the weather's bad, you could fit you could fit probably four people in here. Uh, it'd be tight, but uh, for 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 you and your significant other, it is very comfortable. You do have your single burner stove as well as uh, your your sink up front here. It does have a slide system that slides out a little further, gives you plenty of room to where you could actually cook inside if you wanted to. Uh, but making coffee, getting up in the morning, you're able to check all those boxes, uh, being inside. Underneath me is the full working toilet, and to the right is the Truma heater. That is your water tank heater, as well as your heater for inside the camper. Back here, you're in a, you got a little bit more cubby space. Um, on the five foot model, there's not a ton of cubby room, but it, it is uh, it, it is enough to where you do have all of your, your storage room underneath as well in a, in a drawer system. Uh, the bed slides out a little bit to where you do have plenty of room for two, two grown adults. Uh, I'm right at six foot and about 200 pounds. My wife's at five eight and we are very comfortable. Uh, but there, there's plenty of room in here for us. Okay, moving on to the rear of the camper. Uh, you do have the ability to shower inside the camper as well as on the exterior. You do have your full hose set up, uh, able to access it from everything from here. In the same compartment, you do have your CO2 reader, or your, I'm sorry, your CO2 alarm as well as your smoke alarm. In the middle, you do have your 20 gallon propane tank that is powering your Truma heater. Over here, you do have a little bit of extra storage uh, that is easy access from inside or outside. Underneath, uh, it is the kit and caboodle option, so you do have the full subfloor system that does have, again, your 12 gallons of fresh water, your nine gallons of gray water. It is a full RV kind of setup, so you do have a full macerator ability, you do have tank heaters, you do have a macerator drain, you do have a water catch system uh, that comes in right into the intake port. You run a hose down from the overhang and you get, you get fresh water coming in. You also have your water drain uh, back here in the back if, if you want to drain the system for the season. Underneath, we do have the deck drawer system on this build. Gives you plenty of room for your extra gear. Uh, we're also working with Air Down Gear Up to do a few different options on drawer slide outs that are gonna be really cool. For their base camp setups, and I believe for the mid-level setups, you do not get the, the full subfloor system. Uh, so your drawer system and kitchen pull out uh, right now it has about 13, 14 inches, and we're gonna be able to take that up to about 18, 19 inches of room. So your fridge, your full kitchen setup, as well as storage uh, can be pretty well set up for this setup, for this model, or for the, uh, the base camp. Okay, let's get into how does the rig drive? Uh, we've added a good amount of weight to it, and you can feel the weight to some extent. Uh, the camper on this rig and plus the drawer system do add a substantial amount of weight to the bed. And how we mitigate that is through the, the suspension and getting it dialed in right to where you are not getting a lot of body roll. And part of that is from the suspension. The other part is because of the skinny guy camper. It is a setup that does not have as much top end weight as such something such as a canopy camper. Um, the canopy camper, they have to provide more structural. It, it does go over the cab. And with the skinny guy camper, it is all recessed down the cab. Nothing is over the cab level. And everything feels pretty, pretty well going down the road. I wouldn't hesitate taking this thing uh, on a Utah Traverse trip or uh, on, our, on our yearly run to Baja. Uh, everything feels right. Driving fatigue is nothing obscene. Everything feels good. Um, the only thing that we really didn't talk about in the in the video was uh, axle upgrades, and we did do axle upgrades to this rig. It does have 513 gears. Uh, the rear axles have been strengthened. The front axles have RCVs. And the only other addition that we would probably do, and we are in communication with the client on, is increasing the braking capability. This rig does, it, it, it isn't too obscene. Nothing feels 
too out of place on the brakes. Uh, it is something though that if we're going through and upgrading everything, it is something that uh, probably worth benefiting having that box checked. I think that about does it for this video. If you got any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. More than happy to talk about the Skinny Guy Campers or us doing a build for you. We got a few more coming in from uh, in-state as well as out of state from smaller builds to, to large. Uh, I've got a few more videos about to hit the channel, uh, including a really cool Land Cruiser 200 from Telluride, so stay tuned for that. Again, feel free to reach out with any questions. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.